tonight we have all gathered here to listen to two of the finest actors of Indian film industry talk to each other and me and to all of you about all things movies, magic, love and life. Uh, these two actors and stars have not only changed the way we engage with on-screen performances, for now they have also changed the mathematical equation. Um, do or do is no more char, it's pyar. And I would want to invite Vidya Balan and Pratik Gandhi on stage, the ones who have done it. That's for you. That's for me. Hi, Justin. Hi. <laughs> so we sit here? How do you feel? I heard it's a long day for you, like a long press promotional day. Yes, it has been, but uh, we've been really looking forward to this. So hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. We already feel loved and we assure you we'll feel even more loved if you come and watch our film. <laughs> But hi, Justin. Hello. Uh, you know, I think Palak did a wonderful introduction, but I would just like to reiterate. Uh, three key stakeholders, HSBC, Taj Hotels, and the Indian Express Group have come together to build a unique platform, the Indian Express Expresso, uh, with an aim to create content that is eclectic, intimate, intelligent, and fun, with personalities from art, culture, and, and entertainment. Tonight, we have Vidya and Pratik on board, and Expresso makes its grand debut. Congratulations on that. You know, I would straight away dig into the film and what we saw. Uh, Sorry. It, it's such an interesting premise with the Anshati. Two lovers rediscover love in a loveless marriage after cheating. <laughs> Let me just ask a very... Let's say whilst cheating. <laughs> whilst cheating. <laughs> Let me ask a very serious and deeply intellectual question. How was it to cheat on screen? It was fun. It's probably the only time in life I've cheated. So <laughs> uh, I enjoyed it. You know, more the merrier. <laughs> Two good looking hot men who is complaining. <laughs> Pratik, for you? Uh, well, uh, my answer is almost same. But uh, I experience the pressure uh, that you feel after you cheat. So uh, lesson learned that I'll continue not to cheat. <laughs> you know, we, uh, this audience here, of course, we know you as actors so much. And the range is impeccable. I mean, from, from Parinita to a scam and now to Do or Do Pyar. What perhaps we don't know much about is, is your past and how you began when you were two young lovers. I would really want to know, Vidyan Pratik, how were you as girlfriend and boyfriends back in the day? You must go first. You have a better story. <laughs> oh. So, as, as a boyfriend or a lover, I hardly have anything to say because I guess I loved one girl uh, in 2005 and I chased her for two years and the moment she agreed to meet me over coffee, I guess my first question to her was, uh, uh, what is your idea of life partner? So I guess I, I never wanted to give her any hint and I actually gave her the clear hint that that's what I wanted from her in life and th we are married from last 15, 16 years now. Yeah. Give it up for uh, Pratik's wife, actor Bhamini Oza. So I couldn't become a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Vidya, tell us here, let me put it more contextually. So you were a girl growing up in Chambur in Bombay uh, and you were an aspiring actor. What was it like to date back then for you? It was as confusing as it is now. <laughs> uh, you know, because I haven't, I, I have to admit, uh, I wasn't a serial dater, but I've... Uh, I dated a few people and it obviously didn't turn out too well. <laughs> but thankfully, my first long relationship is a man I married. So, uh, I think even if I kissed a few other frogs, it was well worth it. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Swati Ayer, my producer is here. And so is Tanuj Garg. Hi, hi. <laughs> but a 
I was wondering, I mean, now because Prati clearly has dodged the question, but have you ever been cheated on, Vidya? Oh, yes, I have been cheated on. Uh, the first boy I dated cheated on me, and I have to tell you, he was... Is it okay to use any kind of language? Okay, he was just an ass. I won't say the second part of the word. <laughs> <laughs> but he was... Uh, I remember we'd just broken up and I met him on... I bumped into him in college on Valentine's Day and uh, he turned around and he said, oh, I'm just going to meet my ex-girlfriend for a date. And I was like, what? You know, he, he literally crushed me that day. Uh, but I've done better than that for myself in life, so <laughs> he must be... But, you know, I'm wondering, is there a pattern that now you can look back and figure out that, oh, I was into these kind of men or I, I, I was into these kind of women. I'm sure at this stage of your life, you can look back and sort of have an idea. What's yeah. yours? Yeah. I was into... <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it. I was into asses. <laughs> <laughs> All of them seem like asses in retrospect. That's, that's the only pattern I can see. I obviously had a thing for them. <laughs> What's your pattern? I think uh, I, I was lucky enough uh, that I I didn't do any of these. I couldn't actually because I, I always felt that nobody's interested in me. I never got any love letters. I never got any hint or if there were any, I couldn't understand. So I got saved. What a scam. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's made up this story so his wife doesn't get upset. <laughs> Hi, Doc. Dr. Michael. Hi. But you know, the film, from what I sense from the trailer and teaser, it, it, it's, it's going to look at such a... It's going to look at modern relationships. Yeah. And, and clearly, infidelity is a topic which on screen we have rarely dealt with. Uh, but, I mean, if, even if we don't talk about the on-screen infidelity, how do you look at infidelity in relationships? Because it can be a deeply traumatic experience for those who are at the receiving end of it. How do you look at it? Exactly like the way you put it. You know, uh, I don't think it's cool, but I do think it happens sometimes. Um, I don't want the experience of it at all. Uh, but I do know that people don't set out to cheat on their partners. You know, I, but I think it ends up happening sometimes. I think with age and experience, you realize that, you know, um, sometimes these things happen. and. As an outsider, you're no one to judge who did what and why, you know. So I, I guess previously I would have, I would have um, had a stronger reaction, but I'm, now I'm like, maybe that's why I could even do the film. You know, I, it's not all black and white now. You know that there's so much in the gray zone in a relationship, and you'll never know what happens between two people. Yeah. Uh, so to each his own, I, I guess. I think the first boyfriend would be happy to listen to this answer. The one who cheated on you, yeah? Uh, I, <laughs> I didn't realize what you were saying. <laughs> but Pratik, what's your take on this? I think had I not been an actor, I, I could have had strong judgments on a lot of things. But being an artist and an actor actually made me empathize with a lot of different people in different situations. Because we actually live different lives in one life. Uh, so before I did this film, I, I actually... You, it is difficult for me to understand that why would anybody cheat in any relationship? But now as I, I've seen, I mean, I have, after having performed Oni Banerjee, uh, I empathize with him because what he did, he had his own reasons. So it's always easy to just to say that it's wrong, it's right. But the moment you see their situation or feel it, you might have a different opinion. You know, the teaser kind of uh, ended on a note which said, or which claimed to say that uh, married people don't really have sex. <laughs> Where do you land on this hot debate? <laughs> <laughs> Shirsha, our director is here. Can I please, can we please have a shout out for her, like a round of applause? <laughs> Shirsha, what do you have to say about that? I think, um, okay, I can only talk from experience. <laughs> married people do have sex. <laughs> and uh, I, I think the nature of the sex changes as you get to know each other more and more and but they do have sex yeah yeah, Prati? yeah. <laughs> i mean why not <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> but 
you know, I was also wondering, I mean, both of you have been in, in long-term marriages. You yeah. got married in 2012, you got married in 2008, uh, 2008. Uh, what's the key to keep the intimacy alive in a long-standing relationship? Are there any keys? Uh, I don't I don't know if there's a key, if there's a mantra or anything. I've, I've not had to make an effort genuinely. But I do think um, I continue to be interested in my partner. We share a lot. Uh, I would think the answer lies somewhere there. Uh, yeah, we share the way we feel. We share experiences. We we are constantly discovering new things about each other still, you know, so I think I, I don't know the answer really. I don't, honestly. Yeah, yeah th there may not be a, s a set answer or set formula to this, but what works largely is that you should be effortless in efforts. Uh, just listen to each other, uh, be available, and that is it. Not always that you have to find solutions. Uh, the more fun is just to discuss in, in discussing the problems most of the times. <laughs> What's the deal breaker in a relationship for both of you then? The loss of respect, trust. I guess, trust. Yeah. You know, the perception from the outside when people look at the film industry and especially people who are married in the film industry, is that it's a marriage in the industry it can be very difficult to sustain because actors are surrounded by temptations left, right and center. Is that a completely false perception or is there some truth to it? an actor fighting a temptation in the film industry? No. no. I, I just think my husband's better than all those I've met. <laughs> no, uh, I, I really think that it's... You know, as actors, we're also switch on and switch off, right? We are... Um, you have to be true to the moment. So, and you are being intimate with a stranger sometimes or whatever, with your co-actor. Um, there are romantic moments, there are intense moments, but once you call for cut, I think you just snap out of it. That also happens with age and experience, uh, because I think maybe early on, you can't quite draw the line between real and real, but with experience, I think you learn to do that pretty well. Yeah, in fact, in, uh, actors, I guess, are constantly dealing with different emotions. So they are the best one to, uh, to control them well. Uh, and temptations are equal in even corporate worlds, in all the other fields. I'm, I'm sure it must be difficult for them, because they don't deal with emotions. <laughs> okay, I just want to ask you all, are you all getting bored? Really? Are you all? No, but uh, I can't hear. Yeah, we need, I think, more claps. Thank you. You know, we actors are hungry for applause, not just because our producers are applause. <laughs> <laughs> so please keep clapping once in a while, even if you're eating, even if you're drinking. Thank you. You know, a lot of, a lot of uh, issues in a relationship between a couple uh, can be traced to, I think, lack of trust, uh, intimacy, lying, loyalty, uh, but also money. Uh, I was just wondering, what's your relationship with money, Vidya and Pratik, when you're individually and or as partners? I love money. <laughs> and uh, between Siddharth and me, I think it's a very, uh, I don't know how to answer that. It's just, we contribute equally to everything, you know. Uh, I was very particular about that when we got together because I started earning when I was 15. And I said, um, I, my... I didn't want to ever feel that I'm dependent on a man because I started earning at the age of 15. So I told him, you know, would you be okay with that? And he was like, yeah, but let's not make a thing of it. But I think he understood where I came from. And I think it's just worked out well like that. Pratik, for you, what's your relationship with money? Uh, uh, money, we have very cordial relationship, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we, we ten now I understood that money also likes me as much as I like it. and. Uh, I have, you know, chased money for the longest time of my life. And now I guess uh, uh, money is interested in me too. <laughs> you know, we all know you love uh, SRK, you love Shah Rukh Khan. 
and uh, oh, our SRK is different. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, but you got married to one SRK in 2012. But I was just wondering whether, I mean, by in 2012 when you did get married to, to Siddharth Roy Kapoor, you were already famous. You were already used to attention. Uh, I mean, just for perspective for the audience, Ishkia had happened, Dirty Picture had happened, Kahani had happened, uh, No One Killed Jessica had happened. And these were like really back-to-back -back films which put you on the map. At that phase, Vidya, when you were getting attention, uh, was that was it difficult? Because how, how do you gauge if people are talking to you or if men are talking to you because you're interested in Vidya Balan the person or Vidya Balan the star? I can imagine it can be a little heady thing to be in. No, so, you know, I'm not a very social person, so I wasn't really putting myself out there. I wasn't meeting too many people, but I have to admit that when I met someone for the first time, I would, you know, wonder whether they're interested in me, in me or um, in Vidya Balan. But when I met Siddharth, I didn't feel that from the word go. I think because he's also well accomplished and he's a very secure man. So, um, he was just looking at me as a prospective girlfriend, <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, so it was easy there. Yeah. But for you, Pratik, I mean, you got married in 2008, uh, and from what I remember reading, you and Bhamini Oza were back then living in a one-room kitchen apartment in Ville Parle, and your father and your, your parents and your brother were also in the city. How was, the, how was that like? How was sort of navigating marriage uh, and married life in a setup like that? I guess it was the most fun time I had because we were in a joint family, like my, my parents, my younger brother, me, my wife. We were all uh, living together in one, one room kitchen converted to one BHK flat, that to a rented flat. And I guess this is the best time. We had a lot of memories, a lot of good memories, and that was a time where I was exploring theater to the fullest. I was... Uh, at almost at the peak of my, uh, my corporate career, I was offered my first Gujarati film. So a lot of good memories of those times. Yeah. I guess whatever that I had invested back then uh, uh, was all worth it. Vidya, how was it like for you and Siddharth, the initial sort of dating or married life phase? Because we know very little about it, I think. Yeah, and uh, you know, because I, I didn't want it coming out anywhere and the paparazzi culture had just started. So I remember our first few dates were only in the car. You know, we would keep driving around from Bandra to town and back. Uh, the, but they were heavy, heady times, you know, uh, very exciting. And I think the fun was also because th there was this slightly can clandestine quality to it, <laughs> which I completely enjoyed. Uh, yeah, so, so it was, hi, Atul. Um, it was great fun. Pratik and Vidya, the two of you have had such an incredible Bollywood journey. Uh, Vidya, for you specifically, I think you, you, back in the day, you were almost supposed to do your first film with the Malayalam industry superstar legend Mohan Lal. Uh, the film got shelved, it never made it to the day. Uh, and then from 2000 till 2003, it was, you have repeatedly spoken about how bad that phase was. Uh, you were getting rejected from films, there were people calling one lucky, there were people who said, in whichever film she is, the film never takes off. Uh, just place us back in that time, with your, for the sake of the room. Was that phase backbreaking? Especially because you don't come from a family of, of film privilege. Yeah, so you know, I think I was... Uh, I was going through heartbreak for three years. Uh, the feeling of rejection was so strong and it was, uh, it was devastating. I was shattered and my will to continue on this path would get shaken quite often. But I have to say that the fire in my belly um, outshone everything else. So I would go to bed um, crying almost every night. But, and I would feel like, okay, today, today was the last day, I'm gonna give up. And tomorrow is a new day. You know, I'll have to start on another journey. But the next morning, I would be right back there at... It would be square one for me, you know? Um, I would feel like, okay, just one more day. I'll give it today and then let's see what happens. And that one, one, one day stretched to three years, but things began to turn, the tide began to turn. But I'm someone who prays a lot. Uh, it's something that my parents have... It's a gift they've given me, I think, my faith. 
So I would pray a lot and I would also vent with my parents and my sister and my brother-in-law and they, they, they were my four pillars. Um, so that gave me a lot of strength. But with the, well, I mean, for the sake of a better understanding, uh, do you remember a particular incident which really pushed you, uh, which, which was really sort of heartbreaking when films were not, or perhaps you were not getting the kind of roles that you wanted? No, forget the kind of roles that I wanted. After the film with Mohanlal got shelved, uh, I was doing another Malayalam film which also got shelved. So, you know, that's where I think people began to brand me unlucky or jinxed. And that was heartbreaking. That was like, for no fault of mine, you know, there was a lot of anger in me at that point. Uh, but also then, because of that, a lot of other people who had signed me between these two films, began to replace me without letting me know that they were replacing me. So I think it was about a dozen films that I got replaced in and it was, uh, I couldn't make sense of it at all. Y yeah, um, but sorry. What, what, yeah, it's something like this, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I think it's just, it just went on and on and uh, there was one particular, there's one particular incident I remember, I, I was doing a Tamil film and uh, on the first day of shoot, you know, the producer came for the Muhura shot and the producer, uh, you know, as the director was uh, br brought the producer ahead to meet me, he took a step back and refused to meet me. So I found that a bit odd. And then in a few days I was replaced because he said I got her Kundli red and she is unlucky. I remember uh, when I, when the news finally reached me, because they, they just packed me off and they said, you know, we're going to resume shoot in a while. But when I didn't get that call and I heard that they replaced me, my, my parents were by now, real, their, their hearts were also breaking for that child, you know. So I remember the three of us went to Chennai. We sat with the producer and he said, just look at her, you know, just she looked like a heroine from any angle. And uh, she doesn't know to act, she doesn't know to dance and... And I was like, you've not even seen me act or dance. You know, um, because I barely did a couple of scenes, but whatever it is, I think that comment about my appearance when they said, when he said, does she even look like a heroine? I think that was very damaging. For about six months, I didn't have the guts to look at myself in the mirror. But uh, life comes a full circle. And after Lagi Rahu Munna Bhai released, the same producer, uh, I bumped into the same producer at an airport and he said, you know, I'm doing a very big film now um, and I, I want to approach you with it. And I said, sure, this is my manager's number, you can speak to her. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, I'm going to come to the physical appearance a bit uh, later, but Pratik, I think you've had a very similar journey. In 2007, 2008, uh, I don't know how many of you know, but... Uh, uh, a Scam 1992 star was working in Bombay, in Mumbai, as a freelance mechanical engineer. And he was supervising the installation of cell phone towers in the city. And he was also then going for auditions. That's, that's quite a busy phase. How did you manage all of that back in the day? Oh, I loved that phase, actually. That phase taught me a lot of things, and lots and lots of things. Uh, so that was a time where I was new in the, in the city. Uh, I just shifted from Surat to Mumbai in 2004 with uh, the degree of enge production engineer and diploma mechanical B production. And I had done uh, some amount of theater in my hometown. With that, I just came here thinking that Mumbai is the place where I'll be able to do both the things together. I started doing that. And back then, I guess the TV was the biggest thing, biggest medium. Lots and lots of series were being made. I thought uh, somewhere I'll, I'll fit. I kept giving auditions and TV rejected me outright. All, all the auditions that I gave, I was co completely rejected because I guess they were, their idea of having an actor on television show was a little different. Uh, so my appearance didn't work for them. Mm, they were looking at certain kind of physique, certain kind of skin color and all those things. So. There are a lot of auditions, and back then the auditions were like in one room. There were 15, 20, peop 20 of us right. giving auditions one after the other. So when you are actually auditioning, the other people are there seeing your audition. Yeah. That's how we, I used to give auditions. And in one of the auditions, uh, the guy told me that, Baki sab to theek hai, but tumhe Amir nahi dikha And I was thinking to myself that how do I work on that? 
if somebody can comment on my my acting skills i can still work on it if somebody can comment on the how i deliver the dialogue i can still work on it but how do i work on that <laughs> so uh, i actually laughed at it i said then it, i guess uh, i am too early uh, here i i i better take my time and theater was always my my space it gave me a lot of comfort it gave me a lot of confidence so i continued doing theater for the longest time you know but pratik i think uh, it's about time you do mention this story to to this gathering here when you were struggling quote unquote struggling your way and you were installing mo mobile towers in in city there was also a rithik roshan cameo in your story uh, we have read us <laughs> we, we have read this about you that back in the day you would also dance at kids birthday parties oh, yeah. for money is, is that correct and at one point you did perform on ik pal ka jeena a, a lot yeah. a lot so uh, i had six seven songs in line that the dj who would come with me for all the birthday parties that i would host he he knew the lineup so he'll start with uh, one song and then jump to another song and i actually would make kids and parents dance for almost one and a half hours and i did that for the longest time so first show that i did i earned 700 rupees and i guess after 2 years i hosted a 31st party of some corporate where my highest payment was 25000 wow. for one show and that was the biggest that i earned yep. then uh, so that helped me pay my rent for 3 months yeah yeah wow you know what uh, with your back in the day also uh, the conversation so much about you unfortunately was not on the craft it was on how you looked on screen um every headline every gossip column everywhere that you see people would only sort of circle back and talk about what you wore on screen and how you looked uh looking back in 2024 with the awareness that you have today do you think it was a witch hunt <laughs> yes i do if i have to be absolutely honest i do uh and it came from a uh, a personal issue that someone was having with me and it's okay i'm better for it today a lot of people what perhaps don't realize is a phase like this when a movie star goes through and because a movie star's life is so public uh, what people perhaps don't realize is the family also gets affected and and that's one thing that vidya i really wanted to touch upon when you were going through this phase you were not the only one who was going through it i believe the entire family was suffering oh my mother you had to see her every time i stepped out for an appearance i'd be at the door and she'd look me up from top to toe and she'd be like uh, are you going dressed like this is it okay and i'd be like of course it's okay you know why you suddenly i would lose my confidence further but because i would see her nervous you know and it was honestly i think it was disproportionate because what was it it was weight on my body it was clothes that i wore uh kisi ke baap ka kya jata hai <laughs> so but obviously people were um, i guess i i think the page 3 culture had started and i was appearing it all the time for the wrong reasons and people would just mention me in articles not related to me also just like like mention if they I have to tell you that that was a time when i seriously it was barely 2 years um of being an actor uh, of being in films and uh because i was like i don't think i can deal with such toxicity but guess what i could <laughs> and today um i do exactly what i want i wear exactly what i want and i don't care about what anyone has to say and therefore everyone's begun to say oh wow <laughs> thank you but with you when you would watch yourself on screen in those films that you did back in the day uh would you would you would you feel bad would you cry were the days when you would no, not no. identify with who you were on screen or you were just no, confused no i i think i was just see i was i come from a non film family right so if there was a costume designer on a film i would not second guess what he was giving me to wear so i would just think that that was that there are heads of department for a reason i'm not going to stand and tell the uh, the dop uh, how they should light the frame similarly i would wear exactly what the costume designer picked for me but obviously they didn't know their job 
you know, because, uh, and I think when I look back at the performances, thankfully, um, they're fine, but w what I do feel in retrospect is that I was sticking out like a sore thumb because it wasn't challenging me, it wasn't fulfilling me. I was not okay being playing second fiddle, you know, and I think that's why I think those that phase was very crucial for me because that led, then led me uh, to do to choose an ishkia and to do a pa and to do a dirty picture and a kahani and no one kill Jessica. So I think uh, what do they say? You throw stones at me and I'll build a palace. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly that. You know, Pratik, I'm just wondering. So, place all of us in the audition room when you would finish your day job, when you would land in these audition rooms, and now, because I've been in one, I, I can picture there are these well-groomed men, yeah. ge gelled hair and with, with, with smelling as well as they do, auditioning for a part that even you are vying for. Did you, back then, Pratik, did you ever feel, I can't compete with these people? Because, of course, you don't come from a film background either. Uh, what was that audition room like? No, so I initially, when I went there and I saw uh, the way you've described, I saw these kind of people there, I felt, I guess, either they are confused that they call me or let me in, or I am at a wrong place because we both can't be in the same room giving audition for the same character. <laughs> if, if that's what their criteria is, then I don't fit clearly. But after giving a couple of auditions and a couple of rejections, I understood one thing that I should be giving more than one reasons to them to have me, to, to cast me. And I, my, that's my approach, I guess. Has, uh, it was always like that, it was always more of introspective, that if things are not working, I need to add something more to it, rather than blaming them. Because the moment I blame them, I guess uh, I'll be out of the picture. But Nothing did, in my hand. But didn't the superficiality of the industry sort of started sinking into you back then, that this is kitna banavti? Yeah, but I think I took it a little differently. I thought that unless I'm successful, nobody will be interested in the process of success. So let's create your own story then. So well said, yeah. So 2007 and 8 is also the time, Vidya, when you started rising. 2009-ish, uh, if I'm not wrong. And similarly for you, Pratik, Gujarati films started to happen. You were doing theatre. But for context, and because the conversation today is so much about this big word, did you back in the day ever feel the bite of nepotism the way people talk about it today? I mean, just for context, when you began your career, uh, Vidya, I think Karina had made her debut a few years before you, uh, before Parinita happened. Uh, when you were dancing on Hrithik Roshan's songs, Ranbir and Sonam Kapoor were on screen. Uh, these are all star kids. And a few years later, there was Alia Bhatt. Back in the day when there was no such major conversation about nepotism and film privilege, uh, even without that, did the two of you ever feel it, that there is some disparity maybe? I felt that disparity, uh, I mean, because I was in Surat, so I always felt that uh, uh, anybody who's uh, living in Mumbai, they all have uh, advantage, better advantage than I have, because they are closer to that industry. So I guess then, then nobody is to be blamed here, yeah? and that's how it works, because all the business families, who else takes the seat? Anybody from their family will get a first chance, right? Mostly. A, m a lot of my friends' parents were doctors, and they, their kids will have better chance of getting into medical field because of their upbringing, because they were constantly surrounded by those kind of people, that kind of knowledge, that kind of exposure. So I never thought that way. In fact, I always felt that if somebody coming from the same family has, has an easy access, then they, they are poor yeah, because they don't have the whole grill. They couldn't experience the whole, whole thing. So I felt very bad for them that they couldn't go to... They, they couldn't face rejections which could actually help them become better actors. Yeah. Is there a rejection that you remember particularly well that sort of you almost always go back to which, which kind of changed your life? Or at least your perspective back in the day? Rather than the rejection, there's, there was one incident which I clearly remember till date that happened in school because I would participate in all the competitions and never win any prize. Uh, school mein hota hai na, ek ladka jo sab mein, sab mein jata hai aur kuch nahi leke aata hai. So I would participate in elocution competition, dance competition, and drama competition. And most of the time, uh, you know, I would feel that partiality ho rahi hai yaar. 
I was I was good, but I didn't get the prize. One day I went home and I spoke to my father that I was good, I didn't win. And my father said that you may be good, but you are not good enough to win by the margin so that they could do partiality if you feel so. So if you next time, before you say this line, you actually have to check yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful foot. Vita, what about you though? When it came to film family privilege back in the day, when you were making your way to the top, did you feel the bite of nepotism? Honestly, you know, I, I've, I've never known how to respond to this question because I feel nepotism or no nepotism, I'm here. <laughs> you know, kisi ke baap ki industry nahi hai. Nahi to har baap ka beta, har baap ki beti successful hote. So I just feel that, you know, I've always, I've been a lone ranger and I've been happy doing my own thing. Uh, there were times when I felt like, okay, uh, there were uh, instances when I felt like, okay, maybe if I had uh, the protection of certain people, maybe people would have been kinder in those, for example, in that phase when we were talking about a witch hunt and all that. But in terms of opportunities, I don't think anyone's been able to deny me my share. So um, I feel it, does, it really doesn't matter. You know, we were talking about physical appearance uh, a while ago, and I really want to know, uh, with the, with the and Pratik, both of you, you think the insistence on the physical appearance, especially of a female star, has perhaps reduced over the years in the industry because there's so much talk of body positivity and people are really coming up in their own skin, they're owning what they wear and how they look. But what's, what's the scene like inside the industry? Is it as body positive as people would like to believe? I do think there's a massive change happening. Mm -hmm. Because previously, before every film, I'd get uh, you know, asked by the producer and director if I could shed some weight. And I've been going through some health challenges for a long, long time. So it was next to impossible. Uh, finally, about four or five years ago, uh, when the director said this to me, I said, I, I want to meet the director and the producer together. And I told them, please, uh, you know, I'm not going to be uh, the body you need me to be. So maybe you should go to the body you need for the film. So which is somebody else, not me. <laughs> <laughs> so so they, uh, they then, you know, I think they were obviously stunned because I said, I'm not going to be. I, I find this absolutely ridiculous because the part was written with me in mind. The part did not require me to be a certain kind of, I didn't need to be a swell figure. So why this insistence? What is this obsession with just thin being desirable and acceptable? You know, and uh, not like I wasn't trying to shed weight, but I've had challenges. And I've tried my best to keep healthy. I think that's always yeah. been my focus. Growing up, I wanted to be thin. At a certain stage in life, I realized that, okay, if that's not happening, let me be happy with the way I am. Because, you know, this body is keeping me alive and it's this body that I'm abusing. You know, at some point, the body is going to stop working. And I won't even be around to abuse it. So, I just think that I began to love and accept myself it's been a long journey, but it's been a very, uh, it's been a very important journey that I've been on. And therefore, it makes me so happy to see all kinds of bodies being represented on screen today, far more than before. It's not, you know, absolute yet, but at least there's a change. You know, Pratik, a lot of people on the internet have this question, why don't you get papped a lot more? Where are the airport looks of Pratik Gandhi? I guess, I guess if uh, one has to inform them before you step out of the house, I don't do that. <laughs> yeah, that's easier for me to, to do my work better. Yeah. But when they meet me, I, I, I'm friends with them. Yeah. <laughs> Vidya, what's your relationship and equation with the paparazzi like? And how has it evolved over the years? It's great, actually. <laughs> uh, so. I request them often not to shoot me because I'm like a jalli. 
and they don't. <laughs> so they're very sweet and <laughs> mindful. Uh, and I've known them now. I've seen the same faces for so many years. So I know them by name. I know I'm also interested in people. So I know a little bit of their Khandani history and all that. Oh, right. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's a lovely relationship. We've all been around for the same amount of time, I guess. But Gudia, are there still times when you get scared in front of paps, especially when it comes to all things fashion? Does the trauma of back in the day ever rear its head? No, I've actually had to work on it. I've been working with a healer for the past 12 years and the initial few years were just spending, uh, just spent on being okay with being, uh, you know, not just on that, but uh, some part of my work dealt with being okay with being clicked because I am a public figure. You know, I get papped when I'm least expecting it. And initially, I would go into stress because I'd be like, oh, am I appropriately dressed? What are they going to say? And so I've learned to calm down. Now, like I said, I request the paps if I have oil in my hair coming out of a salon. But if I don't, and they pap me, I'm, I'm okay. If someone doesn't like it, too bad. Whether it's impossible not to talk about you and your career without mentioning the box office pull that you've had. Uh, Ishkia, Doty Picture, Kahani, No One Killed Jessica. These are the films which really set the box office on fire and it got all this acclaim that we, we know of. Back in the day, how did the industry react to it? What, did you ever experience some top male stars or just male stars being reluctant to star in a Vidya Balan film ever? Back in the day? <laughs> I don't think oh, they'd wow. be okay even today. Um, to star in a Vidya Balan film or in a female-led film. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, their loss, honestly, because we're doing better cinema than they are. <laughs> no, I genuinely believe that. You know, they're doing the more formulaic films and the, the women-led films are far more exciting. So, um, but yeah, there was, you know, the, of course people have been appreciative and all that, but the male stars are uncomfortable with women taking center stage. You know, or rather, I, maybe that's wrong. They're okay with not taking center stage. So therefore, it could be anyone else. Um, I don't think they'd be, they'd be okay with anyone else stealing. The thunder? <laughs> but back, I mean, when you did start facing it, did you feel bad about it? Oh, no, not at all. Hmm. I was like, they're threatened, what can I do? <laughs> <laughs> But Pratik, how is it for you? I mean, when Scam blew up the way it did and all of us saw it and loved it, were there conversations around you, Pratik, which, which people were saying that, okay, OTT is okay, box office plan is okay, because it, it, it can be quite an industry thing. Was there something you heard? Yeah, yeah I've, I've heard that, that okay, now I mean, uh, people loved your work on, on OTT. Uh, but see, uh, you know, box office is different ball game altogether. We need to see how people are excited to come out of their, uh, the comfort of their homes and uh, spend that extra F time and money to buy a ticket and watch you on big screen. So we'll have to see that. And you have to prove yourself there. So yeah, in fact, after Scam, everybody that I worked with, they all launched me. <laughs> Says a man who just last month delivered a very big blockbuster oh. comedy hit, Madgao Express, please. Thank you, thank you. But, you know, within Pratik, when you struggled your way and you got success, you struggled your way and you got success, what's the most important thing to remember when you first taste the big fame? Uh, what, what truly has kept the two of you together after you've tasted, with you, Scam, with you, the face that we had? What's something that you kept in mind? I think I, I've understood this earlier on my life that nothing is permanent. And theater taught me this uh, very clearly that nothing is permanent. The claps today may not be there tomorrow. Uh, the criti criticism today that we get might get converted to praises tomorrow. So I'm here as an actor. My job is to create characters in the most honest possible way. And that's what I keep doing here. So I don't want to take pressure of uh, the success uh, and that's it yeah but there for you was there a learning after you started tasting success i think uh, it was just initially it was just unbelievable for me you know that this is this was a long cherished dream and it had actually fructified 
I was actually seeing success and I don't think I enjoyed it then because I didn't know how to. I, I was just and I was being presented with so many opportunities. I was just working back to back and I didn't pause to savor that moment. But maybe therefore, maybe that's the best way to deal with it. I feel not, not like, you know, um, not make too much of it, I think. You know, we can't really talk about just box office in your films and not talk about what the industry is sort of going through right now. We have also seen a big hit in the form of crew with, with Tabu, Krithi, Sanan and Kareena Kapoor Khan leading the film and the film is doing so well. What does a success like crew mean to you uh, with their, and to the industry today? Because it comes at a time when macho blockbusters seem to be ruling the chart. What does that feel like? Actually, not all macho blockbusters are doing well, you know, so I think we need to remember that. Uh, and here's a film that had three women uh, lead it, and it was so much fun. It, it, they weren't taking themselves too seriously, you know, and it thrills me that a film with three women, and at the age that they're at, um, is doing so well. So the, it, it's actually... Uh, changing a lot. We're ex we experiencing that change as it's happening. You know, I think it's a wonderful time. I was a little worried after the pandemic because people were a bit, uh, again, being conservative about women-led films and all that. But obviously, this is a better time now. Yeah. Pratik, for you, were you scared during the pandemic when people started saying, it's the end of the road for Bollywood? In fact, that was the time where I was trying to shred those extra kilos that I gained for uh, Harshad Mehta's character. And uh, the trainer that I was working with on the phone, he actually told me that, you seriously want to do it now? <laughs> you just eat, have fun, because you don't know what happens tomorrow. <laughs> so that was the time where I was actually trying to look different than what I used to look earlier. Yeah. Uh, and that actually helped me. Because the moment scam release, people has, uh, people, largely audience has seen me uh, like Harshad Mehta, with that big paunch and, 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 and a huge moustache and all. And by the time it came out, it worked very well. I started giving interviews. Uh, in my first interview, the interviewer actually asked me that, was that you? You look different, you look younger. And I guess because of that, uh, uh, the doors opened and I could do different kinds of cinemas and people could visualize me in, uh, in films like Dor Dupyar. Otherwise, uh, I guess, logo ne mujhe shayad us box mein bitha diya hota. <laughs> so I guess I was very happy with whatever happened there. Yeah. What was your first impression when you watched Pratik's work? What did you think of it? I was blown. You know, what a performance. I actually, and I keep saying this, if I didn't know how Harshad Mehta looked, I would have thought that it's him, Sakshat Harshad Mehta and the show, because he was unbelievably real. Yeah. Um, just fabulous. And then when you see him in Doar Do Pyar, it's two ends of the spectrum. Yeah. You know, that, that really says so much about his, uh, his craft as an actor. He's so versatile and effortlessly so. I enjoyed working with him. Pratik, what's your first memory of watching a Vidyavalan film? Do you remember? A performance? Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. So, but the first memory was Ham Panch. <laughs> And then the striking memory uh, was Parinita. How did that make you feel like? Oh, it was brilliant, yeah. She was brilliant in the film. And I have watched all her films uh, before uh, I knew that I will also get a uh, chance to work in Hindi films. Forget about working with her. Uh, but uh, I had no clue that how will I reach that place. Since then, I watched all her films. And the best part about her uh, is that, the, you know, the kind of love that she gets. There, that is a reason behind it, is what I feel. Because the, with the simplicity that she approaches the character, it reaches to the heart of the audience every time that she's performed. And that is because she is that kind of a person, that warm personality, that simple that she is. So before, I, when I was offered this film, yeah. I, my, I had this thing in my mind that, okay, Vidya Balan, the star, I'm going to meet her and we'll be working together. When I went to her place and our producers decided to uh, make us sit together and click some photographs to see whether how do we look together. That was the most awkward moment ever. <laughs> Imagine, I took her to her first time and I'm sitting with her, trying to control all the nervousness yep. 
and I everything that okay, I'm with Vidya Balan, and they were clicking photographs. We were looking absolutely awkward, and then she laughed. And you know what happens after she laughs, right? We love that laughter. Yeah. Thank you. Would that you remember this moment? Pratik is mentioning. Yeah, absolutely. It was like I almost felt like the only thing that made me happy is ladki dekhne nahi aaye the. Ladke ko leke aaye the. No, but it was still when we sat next to each other, and they were saying, you know, just act like, you know, just make make it candid. <laughs> How can you make it candid? We just candid. met, yeah. but that's what I think made me laugh, and then we both burst out laughing, and uh, you know the ice was broken. You know, but you were these two incredible actors and stars, Pratik and Pradya, and were you ever told, or at least have been told right now, that a big picture, kar lo. do that, do those big ass <laughs> with a big scale. Okay, I've said that enough number of times here. <laughs> I'm high on espresso. Uh, <laughs> like, a big film, kar lo. do a big mammoth action uh, scale film. So a lot of these universes are seem to be working today. How do you navigate that conversation? And do, do people tell, advise stuff like this? No, they know I'm deaf. <laughs> so they don't say anything like that to me. Uh, yeah. For you, Pratik? I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, so after yeah. scam, uh, I, I got a lot of advices that don't change, huh? just be the way you are. Don't change. That was one. The other is, now you need that one big film, you know, with big stars and big big scale and all. Uh, you should work with these kind of people. So all these advices that I got, and I was constantly asking myself that, how does it work? What is the formula? If there had been a formula, there must be a lot of people who would have not given a single uh, flop film. Aisa to koi nahi hai. Yeah. So which formula works? The formula that worked for me, which got me to this place is that, just listen to your gut. Whenever you read the script, whenever I, I read uh, any story, it's just the gut feel that helped me. So I don't want to change the winning combination. Yeah. Is there an advice that you are glad you didn't take? Uh. I didn't take no advice. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, but I think I would keep telling myself that uh, if everyone knows what works, why is there only one Amitabh Bachchan, yeah? So everyone should be, you know, everyone loves to give gyan. And I, I do think that a lot of times it's, it comes from a place of good intention, but a lot of times it's just because they feel like they know better. It's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. I don't know if you're aware of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, just so in fact, in fact, uh, the advices uh, used to come before uh, I did scam right. a lot from a lot of family members. Hmm. They were all well-wishers. One of my cousins actually told me that, why do you want to get into acting? You are a first class engineer. Just keep doing your job. No, you have better pros prospects here. You tell me one person who came from Gujarat and become become a big hero here. Uh, he I can actually tell you, asked I can the tell detail. You. I can tell you, Pratik Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually told me that no, don't call about, no, don't talk about Paresh Rawal and Sanjeev Kumar. Because <laughs> You tell me who's in their age group. I had I had no answer. And I almost uh, I thought that he's what he's saying is true. Yeah. But then everybody has their own separate journey. Yeah. You know, just for context, Pratik, you left the mechanical engineering job. What was your paycheck like back then? So when I left the job, my, my uh, annual package was around 26 lakhs. Yeah. How long did you take to sort of match it when you became an actor? Oh. That happened after scam. <laughs> right. Yeah, that happened after scam. Wow. You know, just one last question before we sort of do one quick game with you. But yeah, I have to ask you, this is a very urban legend kind of a thing. Uh, we, of course, know that you love Shah Rukh Khan and a lot of fans online keep talking about a possible collaboration between the two of you. Uh, but if I'm right, Vidya, didn't the two of you come very close to collaborate long back on a film called Two States? No. Is that a correct reading? No, no, not at all. We, I've never been offered a film with him. Is that a regret? Yeah, because I think we'd make a great romantic pair. Uh, I'd love to romance him on screen. <laughs> yeah. uh, I have the other SRK for 
yeah. myself. But yeah, I'd love to. Right. We've never been offered a film together. Oh. You know, talking about Charok, of course, we need to end, on, end this on a very romantic note. So this is like, just picture this, both you and Pratik are on a date night and both of you are trying to figure if a second date would be possible. You have only five questions to ask each other to figure that out. What would you ask each other? I know what Pratik would ask me. What's your idea of an ideal partner? <laughs> and our date would end there. End there. <laughs> so forget about the second date. The first date will also end immediately. <laughs> Is there no follow-up that both of you will have? Uh, Come on, what if you don't ask that question? You know, it's been very no, long. No, if I don't ask I this question, I, what I'll ask her is that uh, the kind of food that you like to eat so that I can find better places next time. Yeah. I, uh, I, I don't like this. No, I always have engineering checklists. <laughs> point by point, that's it. Yeah. So yeah, but I'm not good at it, I think. But would, would you do any follow-up to check if he's capable for a second date? I'd be like... Do you like Shah Rukh Khan? <laughs> no, only because then it would tell me if he's romantic or not. Yeah, that's, not that's because a, of anything else. Yeah, that should be the first. Though date if he night liked question. him, then I would be a bit worried also. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. what a tricky question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I uh, will now open it for the audience Q and A, and I would really want the first question. Uh, do we have a mic here? Yeah, yeah. Shah Rukh is right here behind us. Uh, I'll now request Mr. Shibam Gulash, Regional Head, West India, HSBC, to ask the first question to Vidya Balan and Pratik Gandhi. Okay, now that you've put me on the mat, uh, this is something which, Pratik, you alluded to a little bit earlier. And this is a question to actually both of you. Both of you have played these biographical characters, whether it was Dirty Picture or Scam 92. All these characters have a public perception or an image. When you're playing them, are you conscious are you trying to do, give them an image makeover to some extent? Uh, obviously, people will think about these characters very differently once you've played them. Are you conscious of, of that happening? I, I was... Uh, honestly, uh, the perception of Silk Smitha wasn't great when we decided to do, do the film. So there were actually a lot of people who were dissuading me from doing the film. Uh, but... I think my director said something very important to me in one of my first meetings. He said, if you don't judge her, no one will. I think that I used as a mantra while playing Silk throughout. And I'm so glad we received so much love. I've received so much love as Silk. Uh, similarly, you know, when I, I uh, did Scam, or before that I did a couple of biopic characters on stage also. Uh, what I feel is that uh, about them, the world knows the stories around them, the situations that they were in, everybody knows. But what must be happening inside their brain and their heart, nobody knows. That's open for me to interpret as an actor. And that I can do if I am not judgmental about the character. Uh, that is a very, that, that's a very interesting area as an actor to explore. Because their wives, their mothers, nobody can tell you what must be happening inside them. And that actually, you know, honestly, if I create that character, it's open for you to judge. And that's 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 our duty as actors. Thank you. Thank you. I think I would like the audience to raise their hands if anyone has a question. The mic will be passed accordingly. Yeah, to, to that sir. Yeah. Pleasure being here. My name is Anil Bhatt. Good evening, Mr. Bhatt. You, uh, there was a nice observation you made about grace. grace? I don't want about you know dress the dress. dresses yes. that you get yes 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 um i don't you know know nothing to against any dress designer but i see that the you know whenever a suit is given to even the best of actors it's out of you know it's floppy right and don't they ever object to it there are, there are ladies' dresses also sometimes which are just out of place. Right. The, I mean, the, there's so many, in, I'm referring to both Indian or Western. They could have been much better. Uh, maybe I've dropped a boulder, but 
थैंक यू थैंक यू Yeah, but sir, so I guess uh, that there's something I don't know whether it can answer your question directly or your concern directly. But uh, art is a field where it is very difficult to say that this is right or this is wrong, because most of the things are right to some of the people and most of the things are wrong to some of the people. And uh, when it comes to design, there are a lot of like abstract painting. Not everybody can understand it. So I used to feel like you feel. I still feel like you feel. But most of the time, I I proved uh, I, I was proven wrong because. it is not exactly to be presented in this way it is just an abstract art that people are you know displaying so yeah i mean that that that's how it works uh sir i guess he said all that has to be said <laughs> oh yeah uh, gentleman there in the back yeah, yeah. hi my name is himanshu uh, it has been a wonderful uh, candid chat from both of you and really interesting to see the real people behind the actors Uh, there's a little known fact about uh, Vidya Balan ji, uh, where she's a goodwill ambassador for an NGO called Arpan. Yes. I find it very inspiring, uh, and that's not much talked about. Can you just share a little bit in terms of you know how you got sort of got into the journey? Uh, because I've known Arpan for a while now. Right. Uh, right. So it's just uh, very curious to know about so, that. Thank you. Thanks, Himanshu. Uh, I actually did a film called Kahani 2, which talked about child sexual abuse. Um, and that's when arpan which is an organization that works towards freedom from child sexual abuse got in touch with me and ever since i've been their goodwill ambassador they're doing fantastic work i forget the numbers at the moment but they have really impacted lives of children and adults across the country so it's not just um children who who've uh, gone through it recently but also adults adult survivors who they help and they also train teachers and um, other staff in schools and uh, you know counselors to be able to help children who've gone through this or people who've gone through this so they're doing a fantastic job and uh, if by my association i can bring uh, it some attention you know i'm more than happy to do that thank you i will let them know thank you uh up the lady there at the back i think same row yeah um good evening this is alfia from iim and actually from rishabh sir and abhishek sir's team yes hi uh so my question to both pratik sir and vidya ma'am is that uh, india as a whole is actually a perspective like uh, I'm really sorry. I've written down the question. I'll just say it. Please read it. Yeah. So uh, India is viewed actually from the lens of the film industry, and the story curation which happens also portrays the culture of India, the hospi hospitality of India, and how India, especially its independence. But at times, it also portrays a different side of India, which at times is only a bit of spice to the storyline. as an organization which promotes indianness among young people i just want to understand how youth as well as the film industry can collaborate better in terms of getting uh, to reach the better perspective of india to a large amount of people basically to masses you know i think that's a uh, um we tell stories and hope to touch hearts when we do we are not doing this to portray any a certain image of india but all these the stories we tell are obviously emanating from the country right so i think there will be some that portray the country in a good light some that may not portray the country in the light we hope it to but uh, all those realities exist within any space within any country and we should be accepting of that that's my uh, personal opinion we we why should we want to paint a glorified picture of anything only a glorified picture of anything i think a realistic picture is always that much more beautiful thank you in fact cinema and literature has always mirrored the society so whatever that we actually see and live that is what is uh, there as a part of the story most of the time right and i think i have i can actually talk about my house 
And when I talk about my house, it's not about only good parts, the bad parts also, that I should, it's my responsibility to talk, so that I highlight and I can fix it. Uh, Vidya and Prati, you want to choose? I think there are two hands there in the back. Yeah, one after the other, yeah. Yeah, please go ahead, sir. Hi, Dhruv this side. Lovely to meet you guys. So you spoke Hi, about, Dhruv. you know, nobody's interested when you're in the journey of success. But once you're successful, everybody's interested. So what is success to you guys? Is it money? Is it fame? Or both? Or what else? Oh my God. So the definition of success changes every day. What I wanted yesterday, the moment I got there, now I need something else, yeah. which might define success in my eyes. But for actors, I guess uh, success is when we see uh, twinkle in your eyes, when you, when you ask that, uh, do you feel successful? How do you feel now? So when you say that, I feel that, okay, I'm successful now. <laughs> Hi, Dhruv. Uh, yeah, I think he said it beautifully. But I will say, for me, the definition of success has just changed kept changing over time. For me, at the end of a day, if I feel it's a day well spent, whether it's working or spent with a family or taking care of myself or just being, I feel it's a successful day if I'm happy with the way the day is gone. So now it's become more than big goals. It's become about the day or about moments that bring me joy. Thanks. At the back, yeah. Uh, hi, Vidya. This is Atul Kaspeka here. I take photos for a living. <laughs> <laughs> and he's one of the producers of Do Ar Do Pyar. So, guys, Ooh. thank you. So, I have a really important question for you. If you had to have a rip-roaring affair, then would you say that my partner Tanuj Garg is a perfectly uh, good candidate for such a scene? <laughs> Are you asking Pratik that? Pratik, please go ahead and answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Vidya, I've seen you two together. I just want to know because Sid's a good friend of mine. Can you just clarify this in public once and for all? <laughs> I proclaim my undying love for Tanuj Garg today. <laughs> that is indeed the story of Dor Do Pyar. <laughs> I saw, yeah, so please yes, go for it. Thank you. My name is Shrikant. Uh, this question is to Pratik Gandhi. How did it, you feel emotionally when you perform Harshad Mehta and Mohan no Das Karamchand Gandhi? By the way, uh, day after tomorrow, I'm bringing Tushar Gandhi. Manilal Gandhi, great grandson of Mahatma Gandhi, to your show day after tomorrow. Oh, oh lovely, sir. Lovely, lovely. I'll, be, I, I, I'll prepare better now. Tomorrow, the whole day, I'm rehearsing now for this. Uh, but sir, as I just said, that any biopic character that we do, I, I don't judge them. I want to tell their human side. I want to show their human side. So uh, I'll just talk about Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, because I'm performing that play from last eight years. And it's a monologue. So I'm the only one uh, on stage. And it is only one actor who's actually you know, telling the whole story. Uh, I always felt about him that he was not born as Mahatma. He was not born with the thought of Ahinsa and all those things. As he lived his life, uh, the way he did, the kind of mistakes that he did, and then what all these mistakes actually made him the perfect guy that we worship today as, as, as Mahatma and as father of the nation. So that entire human journey was more attractive for me. And that's what I try to bring on stage. Uh, uh, as far as... Uh, Harshad Mehta is concerned, again, uh, we collectively, in fact, Hansel Mehta also had the same idea that let's not judge him. I, we don't want to make him hero or villain. We will tell the story in most honest possible way and we'll let you all judge that what you feel about it. You know, just to add a quick context, I think uh, in Gandhi, you will finally be working with, with your wife on screen for the first time. Yes. You want to talk about that a little bit? How does that feel? Oh, uh, that, that's an amazing feeling because we both were, you know, waiting for that one good script and one good uh, story to work together on screen because we've been doing theatre since a long time now. And on stage we have explored all different power equations where we have directed each other, where we have worked with each other, uh, we've been, uh, we've been criticising each other. This is for the first time that we'll be working on screen and that too for uh, the characters like Kasturba Gandhi and Mohandas Gandhi. So nothing better than this. 
Oh, question. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll have the last question now. So, Vidya, you can you can pick any. We have two hands. Oh, that's okay. No, so we'll we'll take these last four questions. The hands okay. that we see, okay, sir, please. Sorry. Uh, so I think in the meanwhile, maybe sir can begin and. It's on. Check. Yeah, it's on. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, my name is Vijay Vikram Singh. Uh, Bashir Badr sahab ka ek sheher hai ki har aadmi mein hote hain 10 20 aadmi jisse bhi milna ho kai baar milna to talks about layers of human personality both of you have played biopical characters to jab aap biopical characters approach karte hain like harshad mehta kitna andar mila kitna bahar mila ya sab kuch bahar se tha internalize kiya zyada tar to wo bahar se hi milta hai पर जब हम कर लेते हैं तब उसके कुछ रेसिड्यू रह जाते हैं ये अलग समस्या है जितने कैरेक्टर्स हम करते हैं उनका कुछ ना कुछ हमारे अंदर छूट ही जाता है सर एंड दैट एक्चुअली मेक्स अस बेटर ह्यूमन बीइंग दैट मेक्स अस सिंपथाइज मोर विद द सोसाइटी एंड ह्यूमन एंड पीपल दैट वी मीट एंड फॉर मी यू नो क्रिएटिंग कैरेक्टर हैज ऑलवेज बिन अ स्पिरिचुअल जर्नी बिकॉज आई हैव टू लेट माई सेल्फ बी अवेलेबल फॉर दैट मैजिक टू हैपन with all the scripts and the research and the knowledge and everything that we read here and uh, you know prepare about that character so uh, it is difficult to put in words but that's how i just you know uh, create them i think i found a lot of silk in me <laughs> she just needed to be unleashed honestly <laughs> no but i will say that silk also liberated me to a great extent she just made me so uh, comfortable in my skin and i'll always love the dirty picture for that thank you uh hi vidya ma'am hi, hi. ji ji phala khan this side so i'm an actor and um, be, uh, i've been looking to both of you as an actors because i am also from a non family the film family background and uh, actors like you you know it's like a great thing to look up to you because aap jaise logo ko dekh ke hame aisa lagta hai ki now we can also become that much and um, i'll just say that my recent film was in oscars so i have been like uh, uh, oh, getting congratulations. A congratulations. congratulations thank you so much my film champaran mutton was in semi finals in the oscars and post that because you you are saying the same things ki abhi ek aapko achhi film mil jayegi na tab aapka career matlab like the mainstream because we as an actor we know there's a lot of layers in the film industries lot of lobbies in the film industries up mane ya nahi mane it, it because we as an actor we know we have to click like that way because every day we uh, just get up jaise aapne bhi bataya vidya ma'am ki aaj uh, try kar lete hain kal nahi hoga to chhod denge everybody you know, our parents do the same way for us and uh, i've been in industry for the 6 years and <clears throat> i've done a lot of work but Uh, every I don't have any questions. Just the conversation. I am so impressed by you. And I, uh, today I'll be going home and telling my parents uh, the, uh, all the things you have said. And it's so inspiring for me. And uh, I'm, I'm I'm really glad that I'm here in front of you and just speaking about this as an aspiring actor, like that level of aspiring actor. You know what I mean. That. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so thank you. much. And all the best. Just keep at it. I think uh, we have a mic. I mic. will. It is already working. Yeah. Good evening. This is Yogesh Bedi. Good evening. I've, I've recently moved to Mumbai, and my sons are overseas, and they kept asking me from there, "Have you met any celebrity?" <laughs> so now I can WhatsApp them and tell <laughs> that you know, yes, I have. But now to the question, you know, uh, various countries have got various USPs. You know, US has got IT. very strong europe has got tourism germany has got uh, technology engineering cars uh, thailand has got tourism again china has got evs india i would imagine has got bollywood have we like those countries gone beyond our shores and done enough to you know market ourselves and you know to reach out these people have all monetized their various usps have we monetized bollywood to that extent thank you i guess not to the extent we can yet but i have to tell you pre pandemic uh we were reaching quite a few countries 
And uh, for example, our films were doing very well in China. Uh, there are certain kinds of films that do different, uh, do well in different parts of the world. But the pandemic, I think, changed things a bit. But I, I, I am very positive that our films will reach a wider audience again now, going forward. And also because, uh, of course, there's a song and dance of Bollywood, but also now I think people the world over are used to seeing uh, films in, you know, every language. Language is no longer a barrier. Thank you. Uh, do we have space for one last question? I mean, video, you don't take that one? Yeah, yeah? Okay. Okay, so two so, questions. Now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Would they choose? Oh God. Huh. He was waiting. He was waiting. Yes, please, sir. Yeah, please. Yes, please, sir. Uh, can oh, yeah. He needs a mic there. I'm uh, Harshad Rathod, not Harshad Mehta. <laughs> okay. uh, my question is to ma'am. Uh, I've seen your movie, Lagero uh, Munna Bhai, uh, several times, and I'm very much, I like that iconic dialogue of yours. Good morning, Mumbai. I think you can end it with that. Oh. Oh, sure, I will, but just before that one, if you can quickly take your question. I will end it on that, sir. Thank you. That's a great end, yeah. No, no, she, she, she. Just, you can ask the question. Hi, this is Priyanka and I absolutely love the conversation. One question each to both of you. Uh, with your, whenever female stars are talked about, rivalries are spoken more than friendships. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's always like this, she's pitted against her, these are cat fights, and extremely sexist notions. But I want to know that, uh, is there a friend in the industry, a female actor friend who you are very close to, perhaps we haven't gotten to know. And how do you really look at friendships in industry? I have to be honest, female or male, I have no friends in the industry. I have, uh, you know, there are lots of people I get along with, but friends are people I've grown up with, school, college, you know, so, and it has nothing to do with. Uh, not being able to be friends with female actors or anything of the sort. It's just, this is a place I work in, but uh, my friends don't come from here. Right, right. And also to Pratik, because we spoke so much about, you know, marriage, success. Uh, after scam, you know, uh, did anything change in, in your relationship with Bahamini in terms of people say fame changes? people or sometimes equations, dynamics, you know, whether you are unavailable because you're now the star, uh, did anything change fundamentally or even for a brief time? In fact, as far as availability is concerned, I am more available now than before because earlier I would do four or five things together, full day job, early morning rehearsals and late night shows and then auditions and all. So now at least I'm in one industry, so I could actually, I, I could get a lot of time now. Uh, the other part is that the success of scam actually, uh, you know, strengthened our relationship because our faith uh, in each other, our faith in what we actually gave uh, to our dreams has gone way beyond now. So, I mean, we are, we, are, we are stronger than ever together now. Beautiful report. Thank you. And this is for you, sir. Good evening, Mumbai. Good night. <laughs> Actually, good night. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you for being a lovely you. audience. It's been a great chat. And, and I'm thank looking forward you, to the film, April 19th. All of you, do or do pyar. Let's show a lot of love. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Do you all promise to come watch the film? Yeah. Please do so. Can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's okay. more like it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much.